Dras Vitches. Hello, my name is Yoshikaga and I'm program specialist uh, for early childhood care and education at UNESCO headquarters. I'm working in Paris because the headquarters is there. Um, and I have the great pleasure to present to you uh, our, uh, our title of today. Um, it's Global Trends in Early Childhood Education. Um, just before um, going uh, into my main topic, I'd like to say a few words about UNESCO because some of you may not be familiar, familiar with uh, our organization. So UNESCO um, is a specialized agency uh, within the United Nations system. Uh, there are 195 member states and 10 associated members. Um, UNESCO has five different uh, sectors, namely education, social science, and human science, culture, communication, and information, and natural sciences. So I belong to the education sector. Um, UNESCO uh, is the sole UN agency, which is mandated to cover all areas of education. And UNESCO is mandated also to lead uh, the organization and the coordination of what we call SDG4 steering committee. I'll come, to the, to come, I'll come back to that in a minute. So as a person um, dedicated to early childhood care and education within UNESCO, I cannot bypass this fact. Uh, it was a monumental sort of milestone for our organization and, and hopefully for the world as well because it was uh, uh, at the proposal of the, the Russian Federation and the city of Moscow that we organized the, the first ever World Conference on Early Childhood Care and Education here in Moscow in 2020, uh, 2010. So it was eight years ago. So you see a little bit of pictures of the, of the conference, uh, but um, it was a really a great event where more than 100 member states representatives came together and we had uh, about 17, uh, 70 um, ministers and vice ministers presented there. So it was really a huge, uh, important event. Um, so as a follow-up to this World Conference, we did uh, publish a publication on early childhood, which is called Investing Against Evidence, uh, the Global State of Early Child Care and Education in 2015. But um, even though this was one of the main things that we did as a follow-up, I consider myself um, that uh, this conference is much more important uh, as uh, in terms of follow-up, because you've been doing this conference since um, 2000, um, I guess 11. Uh, this, I guess this is the uh, seventh edition, uh, bringing uh, all the experts, professionals from Russia and all, also from other countries together to exchange knowledge and experiences. So I really would like to congratulate you for being able to continue this, and I really wish that this is going to uh, keep going with uh, an increasing number of participants and experts from other countries as well. So um, I'd like to put uh, my presentation in the context of the changes that occurred between 2010 and now. Uh, so one of the things that I like to highlight, uh, which has a global importance, is the adoption, ad adoption of the SDG framework. So sustainable development goal. Uh, so um, uh, at the UN level, it's called Agenda 2030 because it's a, it's a framework that covers uh, many concerns that we have today. Um, so this was adopted in 2015. Previously, um, as some of you might know, 
previously, at the global level, we had a framework which was called Millennium Development Goal, MDGs, which had only eight goals uh, contained. Uh, but then with uh, all the emerging trends, on all the emerging issues such as ecological stress, uh, increasing inequalities, uh, uh, technological advances which are changing drastically the way we live, the way we educate, we, the way we are educated, uh, the way we create things, the way we are connected. Um, uh, with these uh, changes in mind, the United Nations has adopted this uh, sustainable development goal, which has 17 goals. Um, so it's framed within five Ps. So people, planet, peace, prosperity, and partnership. And for the education target, which is uh, the edu uh, SDG 4, uh, it has 10 different targets. So um, early child care and education figures as the second target within the SDG 4. I'm sorry for the acronym, but it's, it's kind of easier uh, for me to go and uh, like you to be able to remember as well, perhaps uh, in your own languages. Uh, later on. So early childhood care and education figures as a second target of the 10 targets that we are supposed to achieve all the countries and we are supposed to, supposed to make progress. So what does this target 4.2 uh, entails to? So it is by 2030, ensure that all girls and boys have access to quality early childhood development, care and pre-primary education so that they are ready for primary education. So that's the title of the, the target. Um, so uh, with, within the SDG framework, um, we have uh, a monitoring system that's uh, getting into place. Um, there, there has been a, a, a special committee created for defining which indicators to, to track uh, worldwide in terms of how we are doing uh, with regard to the 17 goals within the SDG framework. So um, for uh, the target 4.2 in early childhood, we have two global indicators um, which are, oops, sorry. which is this proportion of children under five years of age who are developmentally on track in health, learning, and psychological well-being. So that's one of the global indicators that we have to uh, keep tracking uh, in terms of how we're doing. The second global indicators uh, that uh, we have to track at the global level is participation rate in organized learning one year before the official primary entry age by sex. So the other indicators, there are three indicators. Um, they are called semi indicators because they are uh, um, optional indicators for countries and regions to, to track. Um, so uh, for thematic indicators, we have uh, uh, something about positive and stimulating home environment. We have gross pre-primary enrollment ratio and also we have a number of years of free and compulsory pre-primary pre education. Let me go next. So um, I'd like to highlight uh, a few things within global trends. It, it's, it's really not possible to sort of capture, try to capture all the important trends that are occurring at the global level, global level within 15 minutes of time. So I'd like to highlight um, uh, these things. So participation, I'm sorry. Participation, legal provision, readiness, quality assurance, and gov governance, and funding. So how are we doing with the participation? So globally, participation rate in early childhood education is growing. Um, but then uh, there are persisting and challenging inequalities. Uh, inequities uh, in terms of participation, both within and among, uh, between countries and regions. So let's look at some figures. Um, so this is a, a, a chart which talks about the uh, um, enrollment ratio growth between 2000 and 2016. So this is the world average here. 
uh, which uh, in 2016, which amounts to 41, uh, 49%. So the gross enro enrollment ratio in pre-primary is uh, 49 at the global level. Um, so we see up here, it's um, uh, North American and Western Europe. It's the highest. We have growing up here for East Asia and the Pacific. Uh, at the bottom, we have South and West Asia and then Sub-Saharan Africa. But all the regions are uh, growing in terms of participation rate. So uh, looking at the, the indicator, which is about uh, one year um, participation before official primary entry age. Um, so globally speaking, uh, we have 69% of children uh, attending. But there are, of course, regional differences as well with Latin America and Caribbean Europe and Europe and North America, highest was 95%. And uh, Eastern and Southern, Southeastern Asia, 83%, and then 42% in Sub-Saharan Africa. Um, well, this is uh, also um, a, a chart which is about uh, participation rate for one year before pre, uh, primary school entry age. Uh, so I'm sorry, this is a small sort of font uh, graph, but then as you can see, um, all, in almost all the countries, the participation rate is growing. Uh, the good countries, uh, if I can find it here, in, um, let me see, oops, sorry. Oh, okay. Um, so, so the, the, this bar here, down here, is the level of 2000, and then up here is the level of 2015. So some countries have done uh, really good progress, some others less, but then it's still growing. But um, as I said earlier, uh, there's uh, some inequity problems persisting. So uh, for example, the richest children were five times more likely to attend than the poorest, which is here. For example, in Serbia and Nigeria, 80% of attendance is for the richest children and 10% for the poorest. Here, we have a picture about the regional, um, sorry, uh, urban-rural disparity. So those in urban areas were tw twice more likely to attend than those in rural areas. So uh, this is the data which is coming from the mixed data from uh, UNICEF uh, with regard to children aged three and four uh, in 52 uh, low and middle income countries. So let's go to the legal provision. So globally speaking, we have 33% of countries that stipulate at least one year of free pre-primary education in 2015. And the number for at least one year of compulsory pre-primary education is 21%. So here you can see uh, how it is at the global level. So this is uh, actually the, the graph uh, which shows free at least to one year of uh, one year of pre-primary. So 33%, as I said earlier. So the second bar is. A, at least uh, two years of free pre-primary. This is uh, compulsory at least one year. This is a bar which is about uh, compulsory uh, pre-primary of at least two years. And then finally these bars is uh, the bigger one is about uh, the percentage of countries adopt having adopted free and compulsory education at primary uh, pre-primary at least one year. And this is at least two years. So this is um, sort of um, a picture that I divided sort of globally. So as you can see, it's very interesting. Uh, so Latin America and the Caribbean has the highest level of percentage of countries that have uh, adopted free or compulsory or free and compulsory uh, pre-primary education for at least one or two years. 
So this is really the highest uh, tendency uh, in terms of the regions. So if you look, if you look at uh, Europe and North America, uh, this is less, um, but then it's still uh, sort of the second uh, uh, highest rates um, in terms of this legal provision. Um, we have to, uh, I have, I, I like to add that uh, in France, uh, for example, in a uh, couple of months ago, uh, it uh, adopted um, compulsory education from the age of three, uh, so which uh, was a, a big uh, highlight uh, within the early childhood scene in the country. So, I, I just want the time to see the time. Okay. Okay. Oh, it's, it's finished. I have to finish here. Okay, I'm sorry, okay. So I, I had uh, many more slides, but then I'm, I'm just going to highlight the big messages in terms of, in terms of global trends. All right, okay, so, in, so readiness is one of the global indicators that we are supposed to track at the, uh, by the international community with regard to early childhood target at the global level. Um, so um, this is the data from the UNICEF mix, um, which has an early child development in index. So the highlights are, oops, Children are least likely to meet early literacy and numeracy conditions compared to social emotional skills, uh, physical health and approaches to learning. And the level of readiness correlates with income per capita, though there are exceptions. So I'll skip all the details here. In terms of quality assurance in early childhood, this is a very important and growing, uh, um, growing uh, tendency of uh, putting more efforts uh, in progressing in, uh, for this. Uh, uh, standards and monitoring tends to focus on easily observable aspects, but some systems are going beyond this. And quality assurance vis-a-vis -vis private provision is very critical globally because the private provision around the world uh, about 41% of children are in private sector uh, provision, and that uh, oftentimes it's not regulated or, or the government is not able to regulate properly. So in, in order for us to be able to give all the children the best possibility for growing to the uh, greatest potential, we really need to pay attention to the private provision as well. So. Okay, let me just cover this one. Global uh, governance and financing. Um, so in, in terms of the tendency at the global level, there is more and more um, movement towards integrating care and education services uh, within early childhood. Uh, and then uh, more and more countries are also establishing uh, um, a coordination mechanism for covering the sectors which is education, uh, social welfare, health, uh, child protection. Um, so going uh, in, in order to attend to the holistic needs of young children and their families. Um, so in terms of uh, government funding, there is not uh, enough going if we compare uh, the government funding going to pre-primary education, primary education, and secondary education globally. Um, uh, there has been uh, some practices going on in some of the countries in terms of uh, introducing innovative financing mechanisms, but this is not really enough. And in terms of aid, uh, aid uh, funding, international aid funding for early childhood, pre-primary education is the least uh, uh, the, the least uh, uh, benefiting uh, subsector within early childhood development. So I'll just stop here. Thank you very much.